never get back to our own world. We're buried here as deep as deep in the earth. Steady, Paul. But we're doing very well. Don't you remember? We were to go under the ruined city. Well, we have done. We most certainly are under it. And that means we're following Aslan's instructions again. Warden! <coughs> uh, uh, Mr. Warden. My name is Mulligatherum. Mr. Warden, have many others, have any others from our land up atop done this trip? Many have come down. I know, and, and few, few have returned, returned to the sunlit land. Worse, at least if they don't taste of anything, they can't taste terrible. I think they're rather nice. Feels like we've been on this boat forever. So we've been underground forever. I hardly remember what the sun looks like. Mm, for a bit of blue sky. Could we play a game or something to fill up the time? I can think of a game. Remembering the signs. <sighs> well, yes. As you said, three was to do what was written in the stones. And we did. We came down here. Four. What's four? The first and only person on our trip. To ask us to do something in the name of Aslan must be obeyed. Not that we're likely to meet any such person down here. gone away on some great affair. The only thing to be done with these top dwellers is to... What? Is that you up there, old Malagathrum? Who have you there? Strangers, sire. Creatures of the overworld. Overworlders? Bring them down to me this instant. 
May it please your highness to remember that the queen... Pleases my highness principally to be obeyed, old mutterer. Bring them down! <laughs> Welcome, overworlders. Welcome. To... Stay, I cry your mercy. I've seen you two children and your strange governor before. Was it not you three that met me on the borders of Ettingsmore when I rode there by my lady's side? You mean you were the Black Knight who never spoke? I was. And that lady is the queen of this underworld? What did she think she was doing? Sending us off to a castle of giants to be eaten for dinner. We never did her any harm. How dare you speak so of the Queen, insolent boy! Prepare yourself for death. Yeah. He's only a kid. Do you want to die instead? Not especially. But if it's a choice between me and a child, you better kill me. <laughs> That's well spoken. If you boy were not so young a warrior, you and I would have fought on this. For I will hear no word against my lady's honor. Whatever she said to you, be assured it was of good intent. It couldn't have been. She must have known. Silence! She's a nosegay of all virtues. But you shall know and love her hereafter. Meanwhile... What is your errand in the deep lands? Please. We are trying to find Prince Rillian of Narnia. Rillian? Narnia? Strange names. Narnia, what land is that? I've never heard the name before. It must be a thousand leagues from those parts of the overworld that I know. What a strange fantasy to come searching for. How do you call him? Billion? Trillion? In my lady's realm. To my certain knowledge, there's never been such a man here. We've been told to look for a message on the stones of the city ruinous. And we saw the words, under me. And under it is here, more or less. You were the more deceived. My lady could have given you better counsel had you had the sense to ask her. Those words are all that is left of a longer script from ancient times, which, as she well remembers, expresses this verse. Though under earth and throneless now I be, yet while I lived, all earth was under me. know that I'm a man under a most strange affliction. My lady the Queen has said that none may see my face until the bewitchment is broken. Oh there, guards! Bring wine and up to us food for my guests. Please be seated, gentlemen.
You must work them harder. I am determined to break through to the overworld as soon as possible. You must understand, my friends, that I know nothing of who I am or who I was in my past life. I remember no time when I was not dwelling at the court of this queen. But my thought is that she brought me hither to save me from the evil enchantment. An empty cup, Frogfoot, suffer me to refill it. Queen and I ride sometimes in the overworld to accustom my eyes to the sunlight. But I must go with my visor down and may never speak, lest the spell be broken. But what is this evil enchantment you're under? I know not. Only that at a certain time every evening I become a changed man. I grow in fury and rage. And would kill even my dearest friend if he came close to me. And that is a spell with all the marks of a witch upon it. But by Her Majesty's art, I shall be free from this accursed mask and the bewitchment the moment she has made me king of that land and given me her hand in marriage in the overworld above. As a matter of interest, where is the queen now? <laughs> earth will be broken through and with her to guide me and a thousand under earth men at my back I shall ride forth in arms slay my enemies chief men and doubtless be their crowned king within four and twenty hours bit rough luck on them isn't it Thou art a lad of wondrous, quick, working wit. For on my honor, I'd never thought of it so before. I see your meaning. Isn't it comical to think of all of them going about their business and never dreaming that under their peaceful fields and floors, only a fathom down, is a great army about to break out upon them like a fountain? <laughs> I don't think it's funny at all. You sound to me as though you'll be a wicked tyrant. What? It's a little maid, a deep politician! Never fear, sweet one. I shall rule that land by the counsel of my lady, who will then be my queen too. Her word will be my law. very near. I'm ashamed that you should see me. Yet I dread to be left alone. What is to happen? Beautiful. 
furious in rage. Stay with me. In truth, none may be here when the evil enchantment grips me. None except the Queen, but as she is away, you... You must stay. We'd certainly be happy to. But those guards threatened us, and the moment they see us, well... The guards! Go through yonder door, it leads to my private apartments, and there await my coming to you once my sufferings are over. Go back to him. No. I'd rather not. But think a minute. I'm sure that Queen's a witch and an enemy. There's a strong, strong smell of danger and magic and lies and treason. We need to know everything that's going on. I vote we go back. and goes and is not yet fully upon me. Make no noise, for I told that prying warden that you were in bed. Listen while I am still master of myself. When the fit is upon me, I shall beg and implore you, entreat and threaten you to loosen my bonds. They tell me that that is what I do. I shall call upon you by all that is most dear and most dreadful, but do not listen to me. Harden your hearts, stop your ears, for while I am bound, you are safe. If once I were up and out of this chair, I'd be transformed into a serpent and would kill you. Never fear. We have no desire to do battle with serpents. But be careful. There's no knowing what I will say to catch you off your guard. You promise, you swear that whatever I say or ask you, do not release me from my bonds. I should jolly well think not. Nevertheless, we must be cautious. If we cunning, I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> Every night I am sane, and it is the only time that I am. If only I could get out of this enchanted chair. 
My sanity would last. I'd be a man again, myself again. But every night they bind me, every night my chance is gone. You are not my enemies. Please, quickly cut my bonds. Please, I beseech you. Have they told you that if I am released, I shall go berserk and kill you? See by your faces that they have. It is a lie. Is it at this hour that I am in my right mind? All the rest of the day, I am bewitched. You are not witches. You are not underworld men. Of your courtesy, cut my bonds. I hope they're safe. You have hearts of stone. You look upon a wretch that has suffered almost more than any mortal can bear. The hours are slipping by. Save me now. But when these hours have passed, I shall be witless again. A toy of that most devilish sorceress. <laughs> and this night of all nights, when she is away, okay. you, you take me from a chance that may never come again. <laughs> Someone surely must have said she made it stop. until it was all over. Help me. Help me and give me my sword! Not on your life. Once I am free, I shall take such revenge on this queen and her people that they'll talk of it for a thousand years. tonight free me now and I'm your friend I'm your mortal enemy else sign. No, it's the words of the sign. What shall we do? Would Aslan really have meant us to... to unbind a savage lunatic? If only we knew. I think we do know. Aslan didn't tell Pole what would happen if she followed the signs. He simply told her what she had to do. This fellow might be the death of us if we lose him. But that doesn't let us off following Aslan signs.
lie there in ruin, vile engine of sorcery, lest your mistress should use you upon another victim. What? Do I see a marsh wiggle? A real, live, honest Narnian marsh wiggle? Then you have heard of Narnia. You may well believe it, for I am Rillian, Prince of Narnia. Oh, Your Royal Highness. Oh, we have come for no other reason but to seek and to deliver you. Who are my other rescuers? I'm Eustace. I've heard my father speak of you. And I'm Pole, Jill Pole. I owe all three of you a greater debt than I can ever repay. But tell me, my father, he is well. He still lives. He lives, my lord, but is old and frail. Excuse me, but shouldn't we be going? We must use cunning for that! Dead, destroy the silver chair! 